Hi everybody, in this video we'll be making a quick selection for LMHS unit with electric heat, hot water cord and no heat. Once you open the case select software, a welcome page will appear with the option to select new project, open project or quick select. So I'll be selecting using quick select in this project and once you use quick select the projects are not being saved. Click on terminal unit, single dot, add a new box. So for your design inputs, you have your model, you choose between L, LMHS or RVE. For size, keep this in auto. You can choose between which size you want. For heating core, you choose between electric heat or hot water core. For reason, none, so cooling only. So for your design primary airflow, this is your maximum design airflow through the primary inlet valve. Which is a 500. For minimum primary airflow, this is the minimum design airflow through the primary inlet valve. Keep this 250. So KCLA uses these values to determine which size will operate with this CFM range. So for your primary inlet static pressure, this is the static pressure at the inlet of the unit. So your annual was on your schedule. So for this is a recommended value if you don't have that on your schedule. So you have a downstream static pressure, which is your pressure drop of components downstream of the unit. So the same thing enter what's on your schedule or if you don't have a static pressure on your schedule, this is a recommended value. So for tin weather, the yes or no, this affects your discharge sound performance. So for outlet type, you select standard. For lining, you select the liner type you want. You can refer to our submittals on the website for a detailed description for different liner types. So liners also affect your sound performance. So use third liner, click control hand, right hand, then click on calculate. So after clicking calculate, case select will calculate what units will meet the criteria that you specify. In this example, auto was selected. So that's why you have different sizes here. So you have your unit size, your inlet size, your minimum static pressure, which is the required minimum static pressure to overcome the pressure drop that the unit produces. You have your radiated noise level, which is the noise produced coming out the casing of the unit. And you have the discharge noise level, which is the noise that travels downstream the ductwork. So you have your extended sound data tab. This displays the sound performance into each octave band. So once you're done, you select what unit you want and click on save and new or save and close. So for the next, we'll be using electric heat. Have you noticed a new window came up here which talks about your lighting method? So we'll talk about that soon. So we'll change our desired primary airflow to 800. Change our minimum primary airflow to 240. Then you have your heating primary airflow. This is desired airflow through the primary valve during heating mode. So you have 240 for this. And also your heating primary airflow cannot be lower than your minimum primary airflow or you get an error message for case select. Then for tin weather, select yes. Then we keep this the same. And also we can change our size to size eight. So we just work with something different. And then for the analysis method, this allows you to select how you want the program to calculate the heating performance. So if you select KW or your kilowatts, this will tell the program that you want to run the calculations based off of using KW. And if you select LAT, this will make the program run through all of the available KW options and tells you which KW produces the living air temperature that you specify. So if you notice how certain fields become gray, while switching between different analysis method, these gray values are no longer being used to select the correct electric heater. So for this example, we'll be calculating our analysis method of B4, our living air temperature. So as you can see, the primary air temperature is 55 degrees. This is the temperature of the air entering the box. You have your design coil living air temperature. So this is the air temperature living 
to call when it's at 90 degrees and you have the maximum call leaving air temperature, which is the maximum air temperature that's able to call one that 100 degrees. Then you have your different stages. You can choose between linear heat, one stage, two stages, or three stages. Then you have your voltage and phase. So for this, we'll use 277 one phase. Then click on calculate once you have your parameter set. So just like cooling only, you have your unit size, your inlet size, your minimum static pressure, your radiated noise level, and your discharge noise level. Then you have your performance data tab. So this displays information about the heating performance of the unit. You have your unit size, inlet size, your heating CFM, which is the amount of CFM or air that's being heated. You have your coal electric heater capacity, which is your coal MBH. You have your living air temperature, which is the temperature leaving the unit. You have your kilowatts KW, which is the energy size of the electric heater. You have your max KW, which is the max KW that we can manufacture with this unit size and voltage. And then you have your MCA, which is your minimum circuit ampacity, which is used to determine the wiring gauge for supply voltage. And you have your MOP, which is your maximum over current protection, which is used to size the breakers to the unit. So the living air temperature, heating capacity, and your kilowatts are usually the more critical to match on a schedule. If the values on the schedule are, are off, some values might have to be changed in order to achieve the other. Then you have your extended sound data, which is the same thing. Your displays the sound performance into each octave end. And for the final selection, we'll change this to hot water. We'll keep the values the same, but there's something new. You have your different analysis method for the hot water core. So we have your MBH, which is your core capacity. You have your living air temperature. You have your core capacity and flow rate. You have your core capacity and pressure drop. Your living water temperature and your GPM, which is the water flow rate. So each analysis method uses different value fields to determine how to select the correct water core to match whichever analysis method is selected. For instance, if GPM, is selected, you enter the GPM that is scheduled and the software will display the heating performance of each row core at the GPM and heating CFM. So for this video, we'll try analysis method for living air temperature. So you have your primary air temperature, 55 degrees. You have your minimum box living air temperature at 90 degrees, so which is the minimum box of the, the living air temperature. Then you have your FPI, which is your fins per inch. This is how the cores are being constructed. So you choose between 10 and 12. You have your right hand for connection. And then for the water side data, you have your EWT, which is ending water temperature. This is the water temperature and ending through the cores. And this is your max flow rate of the water. So you have this at 10 GPM. So once you have all this selected, you click on calculate wait for the results. Okay, so for the general data, it displays the same thing as using electric heat and no heating. And then you have your performance data tab, which displays information about the heating performance of the unit. So you see there are new options available here. You have your unit size, your inlet size. You have your number of rows in the heating core. You have your heating CFM. You have your heating capacity, your GPM, your water flow rate, your box living air temperature. Leave as the living air temperature of the box. You have your living water temperature, which is living water temperature of the hot water cores, water pressure drop over the cores. You have your air pressure drop over the cores. So all of these values depend on each other. Changing one value will change other values. So for example, if you increase the number of rows, this could increase the core capacity, the living air temperature, the water pressure drop, or your air pressure drop. And this could decrease your living water temperature. If you increase your heating CFM, this will increase 
your core capacity and living water temperature. And this will decrease your living air temperature. If you want to calculate for a higher MBH, this could result in a higher flow rate or higher number of rows and may affect the living water temperature. Increasing the GPM, this could produce a higher MBH, living air temperature, living water temperature, and water pressure drop. And this may reduce the number of rows. So for your box living air temperature, this depends highly on the heat CFM, GPM, and number of rows. For your living water temperature, this depends on your GPM, the flow rate, the heating CFM, and your number of rows. For your water pressure drop, this depends on the GPM, the number of rows, and the construction of the core, which is the number of circuits. And for your air pressure drop, this depends on the number of rows and heating CFM. So there's an extra option here in case of what you have on your schedule. So this shows the quantity, the altitude, the height. You have your controls, E to BDC, analog or pneumatic. You have the fluid type, either water, ethylene, or propylene. And you have your glycol level. So this depends on what's on your schedule. So all these are just are recommended. If it's not on your schedule, you can use this option. So if you have any questions, please contact the support group at Kruger Terminal Units-Equip at Kruger-HVAC.com. Thank you.